this Jesus wants us to love him and praise him and, and to uh, be a follower of his and all of those things. So who is this Jesus? And we are going to be reading again, this time in John 1, 9 through 14, as we uh, thank all the uh, viewers from uh, YouTube and uh, all the viewers that are viewing in with us right now, Facebook, and we thank you for coming. And we're going to be reading from John 1, 9 through 14. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world. And through the world, though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, descent nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. May the Lord add His blessing to the reading and understanding of His Word. Growing up, Many of you knew me when I was growing up, some of you. I had a lot of precious memories, but one of my precious memories was my old country schoolhouse. Prairie Lee, it was called. By the time we, uh, my sixth grade, we had to be uh, shipped off to Hardin Junior High. What a horrible change that was for me. But at that time, there were 12 kids in the whole school. And we had a teacher, Mrs. Tig. Some of you may have known her. But we loved her and she loved us. She was like our second mom. There was only 12 kids in the whole school. And she loved us. And she taught us the truth, the very best of her ability. Here at church was a blessing of all my Sunday school teachers. I talked to you about Mary Lou and many others. They were very, they loved us all. They loved us and they taught the very best that they could about the truth of Jesus Christ. Millions of people have been influenced by great teachers. Some of you right now may be thinking of some of the ones in your lives that had made a difference. Whether it was at church or Sunday school, youth group, kindergarten, first grade, junior high, whatever it might have been. They have made a deep imprint in your life. Educators, and I know we have a lot of them, and if you have children, you're an educator. If you have grandchildren, you're an educator. But many of you are educators, and you need to remember that you are following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Jesus was addressed as teacher or rabbi, which meant the same thing, teacher. All through the New Testament, 45 times in the New Testament, he was addressed as great teacher. And that's what he was. He was the greatest teacher, greatest leader and teacher ever to be known on this earth. He was the supreme teacher of all ages. Those that followed him were called disciples. Also meaning learners. You and I who have accepted Christ as our personal Savior, we are disciples and he is the great teacher. Jesus was here on this earth and he taught. Many times he would teach to one or two or three and they would sit at his feet. But oftentimes he would preach to thousands. Whether he was on the edge of a a boat in the edge of the water and all were listening or he, he was at a, a hilltop. And it always amazed me that he was preaching 
there was 5,000 when he fed those 5,000, but that was just a minute. He didn't count the women, he didn't count the children. There was 10,000 or 15,000 people there. He had no microphone. But he taught, and they heard, and they listened. Whenever you and I open up our Bibles and we start reading the New Testament or the Old Testament, either one, you are sitting at the feet of the greatest teacher ever known, Jesus Christ. You're sitting at his feet just like they were centuries ago. You're reading the truth from the greatest teacher. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Jesus, the teacher of truth. Before we get into the teaching part, we're going to talk about the truth part. Number one, Jesus, the truth. Jesus, the truth. A, Jesus is the source and the personification of truth. Now, this goes back to what we were talking about last week. God being, Jesus being God and man. And it falls right into this that we're teaching today. As God, he is the source of truth. Write that down in your brain. God, Jesus, is the source of truth. But as man, he is the personification of truth. He's both. Now look at John 14, 6. Look at John 14, 6. Je Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by, except through me. Now I want you to look at that. Jesus didn't say, I will show you the way. He didn't say, I will tell you the way. He didn't say, I will tell you the truth. He didn't say, I will provide you with life. He boldly declares this. Get this. I am all of those things. I am all of those things. He is the very embodiment of those realities. He is the very embodiment of those things. He is truth. He is the way. Let's look at B. If you believe in Jesus Christ, then you believe in truth. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you believe in truth. Look at John 1, 9. What did Jesus say? The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. That's what John the Baptist said. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming to them. The true light. Now look at verse 14. The Word became flesh. The Word capitalized. That's Jesus. He became flesh and made His dwelling among us. He, we have seen His glory. The glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and what? Truth. If you hear, if you trust, if you believe, then you know the truth. Now this brings us back to a story that we remember in the Bible at Easter time. Jesus is talking to the Pharaoh. And he's asking him just who he is. Now look at, uh, first, uh, look at John 18, verse 37. He said to Jesus, are you a king then, said Pilate? And Jesus answered, you say that I am king, and in fact the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What does that mean? 
everyone on the side of truth listens to me. In other words, if you want to know what the truth is, if you want to live truth, if you want to do what's right, then you're going to listen to Jesus Christ because he is truth. So then he came back with this in verse 38. He said to Jesus, well, what is truth? He kind of snapped that back at him, I think. He said, well, what is truth? Well, here's something I want to talk to you about. Unfortunately, that's exactly what our contemporary people of our today is saying. What is truth? Most modern thinkers today reject the existence of ultimate truth or absolute values. It's whatever you want to think it is. It's taught in the halls of our colleges. It's all across our TV screens. It's on the pages of our textbooks. The world tells us there is no eternal or final foundation. It's whatever you want to think it is. Look at C. That kind of brings a very big question for us and the world. What do we build our life on? If there's no absolute truth, if there's no absolute right or wrong, then what's the core basis of truth? There's nothing to build it on. It's like building, as Jesus said, on, uh, on no foundation, on a sand. There's no foundation to build our lives. And because of that, our lives shift around everywhere, chaotically. That's why there is so much chaos, confusion in our world today. Everyone is inventing, listen, they're inventing their own truth. They're inventing their own truth, and it leads to despair. However, if Jesus Christ is the incarnation of truth, then we can have a personal relationship with truth. If Jesus Christ is the embodiment of truth, then we can have a relationship with truth. In knowing Jesus, we can know truth. Here's one of your questions. The truth is absolute and objective. It's both. And it's also personal. We can know it. It's obtainable. There's no reason why we can't know truth. We have to write in the Bible. We can know it. Jesus said this in John 8, 32. John 8, 32. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Because the truth, I think this is one of your questions, because this truth is a person, you can know him. Because he is Jesus, we can, he can set you free. Nothing is more liberating than this. Today, our culture is in great need of the truth. We need honesty. We need reporting that's honest. We need honest speaking. We need honest living. We need honest government. We need honest teachers. And we have the truth if we believe in Jesus Christ. Number two, enough about truth. Jesus, the teacher. The most effective teachers in life are those who model what they teach. And they challenge their students to grow beyond what they think they can possibly do. That's what Jesus Christ did. 
He was the greatest model of truth. He didn't just preach it, he lived it. Look at A. Jesus' teaching will challenge you. Jesus will challenge you above your priorities. About your potential. He will challenge you with all of those things. One of the greatest stories that we read all the time is about the young rich ruler that came to Christ to know what he could have to do to be able to be and to obtain heaven, eternal life. And Jesus challenged his priorities. He talked to him for a while, and finally he came to this verse that's written down, 1822. Jesus says, when Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Jesus was not concerned one teeny bit about his wealth. He didn't care one little bit whether he sold it all or not. But what he did care about was his priorities. Jesus knew more than the man did. The man did not have wealth. Wealth had the man. And then he said, are you willing to walk? away from all of these possessions of yours and seek the kingdom of God. And we know the story. He could not do that. He got up and walked away because he could not turn loose of the temporary to obtain eternity. Perhaps some of the most chilling and challenging teachings Jesus ever gave was in Matthew 5 and through 6 and 7 chapters. We call them the Sermon on the Mount. There at the Sermon on the Mount, he was teaching and preaching, and they knew he wasn't just some carpenter. He wasn't some just ordinary man. Not some just ordinary preacher, because he spoke as the authority and the understanding of Scripture. He said to the crowds, and he talked to the crowds about ethics. He made images in their mind that they couldn't get rid of between right and wrong and giving. He talked about the Lord's Prayer, golden rule, salt of the earth, the narrow gate, the house of the rock. He talked about morality and spirituality. Things that they had never thought of. He preached about lust and anger and divorce and oaths and anxiety and retaliation and hypocrisy. Talked about hope and peace beyond understanding. We need to be encouraged and read these often. We need to read them and let them challenge us to be more like Jesus Christ, the one of truth. B, his teaching will change you. It will change you. Jesus' words inspired us to change, to be different, to be better, to grow and mature in the word. He wants us to be more like him. Jesus going up into heaven right before he sent, he then sent his Holy Spirit, once he went into heaven, he spent the Holy Spirit into our hearts to indwell in us, to live in us, to convict us of our sins, to help us grow into the likeness of Jesus Christ. We talk about the fruit of the Spirit that transforms us into being able to reflect Jesus' pers Jesus's personality. His attitudes, his wisdom, his love, all of his qualities. We have that ability to be changed. Romans 8.29 For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. 
that he might be the first among many, firstborn among many brothers and sisters. God saw us and wanted us to be that way before anything was ever made. As this process unfolds with us and in us, our lives become more truthful, more authentic, and people can trust our integrity. Last one. His teaching will cheer you. His teaching will cheer you. His teaching cheers us. Life is hard. But Jesus and his truth will cheer us up. Look at John 14, 1 through 3. We, we study this, we read this, we talk about this all the time. John 14, 1 through 3. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, Jesus says. My Father's house, there are many rooms. If there was not so, I would have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. What could give us more joy? Or hope. From Genesis to Revelation, we have never ending comfort, cheer, encouragement, hope, and reassurance. We need to remember to read the Gospels and reread them because Jesus is truth, truth that challenges us, changes us, and cheers us. And folks, I don't know if there's ever been a time more necessary for us to be cheered up. I'd like to close with a story. Kind of a, a thing that's happened in our world. Many of us remember those very first televisions. I, I don't remember the very first ones, but the first ones I remember were pretty blurry. <laughs> Not very clear. And we'd go out, we'd turn that antenna, and we'd have a pair of pliers on that thing out there. I know you all didn't do that, but we had a pair of pliers on there and we turned it so it would come in clear. And then all of a sudden something happened. They called it high definition TV. And it changed, it changed the, the way they made movies. Because they couldn't hide things like they did. They couldn't make a wall out of cardboard and, and magic markers. Actors and actresses that wore that real thick pancake makeup to hide blemishes. They couldn't do that anymore. You could see it. I remember seeing one that had been changed to high definition and this mouse was going across. the. You could see the string as plain as day pulled in that mouse. It was a fake mouse. It changed everything because it could be seen. Low tech TV had to be changed because of high definition TV exposed everything. Isn't that what Jesus Christ did for us? He exposed everything. We have a high definition Jesus that hides nothing. He knows the complete truth. He shows us the wrinkles in our lives. He shows us the blemishes and the moles and the way we live. He shows us the sins. And shows us the change that we need to be so, not covered up, but changed. To have a consistency in our lives that rings true 24 hours a day. We can't pretend to be one way at church and live some other way the rest of the week. Jesus' truth gives us the stability in our ethics, in our morality, in our personalities. We know we're not perfect. We make mistakes. But as we see truth in Jesus Christ, our lives can grow in consistency and uncover the Christ-like Christian truth that he wants us to live. 
Romans 8, 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of, of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have gone through so many things this past few weeks and we have more to talk about about who this Jesus truly is but we know Lord that he is the truth he's the way he's the life he is the only way to you Lord help us to remember those things help us to live them help us to seek the truth in the Bible help us to seek the truth in the what Jesus taught that we may be as Christ-like as possible. And when Jesus comes here on this earth, he'll find us and this church as Christ-like as possible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Anyone who would like to join our church or dedicate their lives to Christ may come forward during this hymn, which is... Father, it is time for us to...